I'm going to show you the most boring, unique, lame, fun, annoying, interesting, stupid, amazing, terrible, fascinating Sonic game ever. And no, I'm not talking about Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car. I'm talking about the Sonic game that never ends. I'm talking about a game that's name is Blue Sphere. Or is it? In October 1994, Sega released Sonic and Knuckles, a game that could connect with other game cartridges to create brand new experiences. This was famously marketed as lock-on technology, but another term they used for it was Introducing the world's first backward compatible game. What? Well, to be fair, they're not lying. The same way you can pop in an old PS1 game into your PS2 or a Game Boy Color game into your Game Boy Advance, you can pop old Sonic games into your Sonic and Knuckles card. By locking on Sonic 3, you got Sonic 3 and Knuckles, a combination of both games. By locking on Sonic 2, you could play as Knuckles in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. But by locking on Sonic 1, you got this. This nameless game we're talking about today. For a long time, this game had no real name. The only thing the title screen says is, No way! Easily the most aggressive title screen I've ever seen. But if you press the A, B, and C buttons at the same time, you can start the game, and the title message changes to the equally demanding, Get Blue Spears! Sure, that's the goal of the game, but you don't have to be so mean about it. In the 1997 Sonic and Knuckles collection, this game was just called Special Stage Mode. Probably because this game is just a bunch of randomly generated levels made in the same style as the special stages from Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles. The game was included in another collection the same year, Sonic Jam, but the game was unfortunately nameless there. For years, Sonic fans had to suffer in painful agony, not knowing what the name of this masterpiece was. Until in 2002, we were blessed with Sonic Mega Collection, which finally gave this game a name, Blue Sphere. But then 15 years later, Sonic Mania ruined it by changing the name from Blue Sphere to Blue Spheres with an S. This name was used again five years later in Sonic Origin, so I guess the official name is Blue Spears with an S and not Blue Sphere with no S. Listen, I love the letter S as much as the next guy, but the simplicity of Mega Collection's Blue Sphere with no S is just so great. To unlock this game in Mega Collection, you have to play Sonic 1 20 times and Sonic 3D Blast 20 times. However, there is another way to unlock Blue Sphere. You automatically unlock it if you have saved data from Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2 on your memory card in slot A. I always thought stuff like this was cool. It was like the developers were giving you a little bonus for supporting their other games. It gave a sense of interconnectivity between multiple games. These weren't completely separate discs, but instead connected parts of your system's world. And that's the same reason why Sonic & Knuckles' lock-on system is so cool. It gives us cool extra content on these old games, like Blue Sphere. So, how does Sonic & Knuckles make Blue Sphere happen? Well, don't worry your pretty little head viewer, I'll explain it to you. By locking a cartridge on top of Sonic & Knuckles, you are literally combining the two games. Like literally all of the data from the top game is copy pasted onto the bottom of Sonic & Knuckles' code. Sonic & Knuckles figures out what game is attached by looking at the game's ROM header. The header is like the description of a YouTube video. It's located near the beginning of the game's code and it just gives some basic information about the game, like its title, when it was made, and what version of the game it is. The header has a unique serial number which is basically like an ID for the game. Sonic & Knuckles looks at the serial number to determine what game is currently locked on. If Sonic & Knuckles detects the serial number for Sonic 3, then the game knows to load Sonic 3 & Knuckles. If Sonic & Knuckles detects the serial number for Sonic 2, then the game uses a special extra chip in the Sonic & Knuckles cartridge to help run Knuckles in Sonic 2. There are some compatibility issues and missing data from the Sonic 2 cartridge that's needed to get everything working smoothly, little things like changing color palettes and level designs. If Sonic & Knuckles detects the serial number for Sonic 1, then it loads up Blue Sphere. Any game other than Sonic 1, 2, or 3 that gets locked on will give you Blue Sphere, but you only get a single level of it. The level is randomly generated based on data from the ROM header of the specific game. The interesting thing about Blue Sphere is that unlike Sonic 3, 
Adrian Knuckles and Knuckles in Sonic 2, Blue Sphere uses no data from Sonic 1, none at all. All of the code for Blue Sphere comes from Sonic and Knuckles itself. What this means is, you really don't need Sonic 1 to play Blue Sphere. All you need is a game with the same serial number as Sonic 1, tricking Sonic and Knuckles into thinking the real thing is locked on. To prove this, I decided to do the unthinkable. I coded my own Sega Genesis game. Boom. 60 frames per second, two colors, four directions of movement. Okay, I know, I know. This game is crazy, but it just contain your excitement for just a little bit, okay? We gotta get through the video. If I open up this game's hexadecimal code and I change the serial number to Sonic 1 serial number, when I boot up the game, it should run Blue Sphere. If it loads the Sonic and Knuckles title screen, that means we screwed up. But I did everything correctly, so it should be fine. Wait, what? Oh right, I forgot the most important thing. In order for Sonic and Knuckles to load Blue Sphere, it needs to know it's connected to a Genesis game and not some random program. It does so by checking address 200,100, the 256th byte of data of the locked on game. And the only thing you need to type here for Sonic and Knuckles to recognize it as a Genesis game is... Mega. Yeah, that's it. That's all you need. So now, if we connect my game to Sonic and Knuckles, it should load up Blue Sphere. Boom. There we have it, folks. It doesn't matter what the game is or what code it has, just so long as in the appropriate addresses, it has the word Sega and the Sonic 1 serial number. Well, actually, there is one more thing it needs. The maximum amount of data a Genesis game can normally be is 4 megabytes. That's absurdly small. Sonic & Knuckles is 2 megabytes, and since Genesis games can normally only be 4 megabytes, this means that the cartridge that Sonic & Knuckles is connected to can also only be 2 megabytes. To sum all of that up, 2 plus 2 equals 4. If the game is over 2 megabytes, then Sonic & Knuckles will only read the last 2 megabytes of the file. Since Sonic & Knuckles is skipping over the ROM header at the beginning of the file, that means it won't detect it as a Genesis game and it will load Sonic & Knuckles instead of Blue Sphere. I have no idea why they decided to load the bottom 2 megabytes instead of the top, because this basically means that any game over 2 megabytes won't work with Sonic & Knuckles. Or does it? While usually, yes, cartridges that are more than 2 megabytes won't work. The only reason they don't work is because, like I mentioned, the game doesn't detect the ROM header. If you make a fake ROM header at the point where Sonic & Knuckles checks if the game is legit, you can trick Sonic & Knuckles and get Blue Sphere to work. Now, Genesis games being above 2 megabytes, especially before Sonic & Knuckles was released, wasn't common. So Sonic & Knuckles not working with larger data cartridges really wasn't much of an issue, unless you really couldn't live without locking on Vector Man 2. So I've done a lot of talking about how Blue Sphere and Sonic & Knuckles works, but who cares about that stuff? Let's actually take a look at the game itself. If you've played the Sonic 3 & Knuckles special stages, then you know the basics of the gameplay. You run around this planet and you have to collect all of the blue spheres on it to beat the level. If you touch a red sphere, the level is over. Yellow spheres bounce you up in the air, and these star bumper spheres bounce you away. If you encircle blue spheres by red spheres, you can turn that whole segment into rings. By getting all of the rings in a stage, and then getting all of the blue spheres, you get a perfect, which sends you 10 levels ahead instead of just one. So, going for perfects is definitely the way to go. You have to be careful though, as the longer you stay in the level, the faster your character moves, which causes the game to become an insanely fast test of your reaction time as you try to finish the stage. And that's really about it, honestly. In total, there are... <clears throat> 134,217,728 levels. Technically, there are only 128,016,000 levels, and afterwards, the levels repeat until you get to level 134,217,728. Then, the game restarts from level 1. The reason the levels repeat after a certain point is because of the formula used to determine the layout of each level. It ends up giving the same results for a few numbers due to the math involved. Now, I said these levels were randomly generated, but that isn't entirely true. You see, in video games, levels are never truly random. Otherwise, each level would be an absolute mess. Levels have certain preset constraints and patterns that they have to abide by to make sure it's playable. Blue Sphere is the same way. There are 128 preset patterns made of 16 by 16 tiles, which we can call chunks. 
four of these chunks are arranged in a square, giving us a complete 32 by 32 level. Each level has a code that you can enter to go to that specific level. So if you find a cool layout, you can share it with others. So you're probably thinking, hey, if Blue Sphere is so good, then why isn't there a Blue Spheres 2? Well, there is actually. Uh, kind of. Like I referenced before, Blue Sphere makes a return in Sonic Mania, and this time they added in some new features. A green sphere which turns into a blue sphere if you touch it, effectively meaning you have to collect these spheres twice. And they also added in a pink sphere which teleports you to another pink sphere. I'm a fan of these additions. It's a nice way to spice up your tried and true Blue Sphere gameplay without straying too far from the unadulterated experience. But if that wasn't enough for you, Sonic Origins gave us new Blue Spheres, bringing back the green and pink spheres in Sonic Mania with brand new levels. Now, maybe even that isn't enough for you. Maybe you're a little high maintenance, but uh, I get it. This feels more like uh, Blue Sphere 1.5 than a true sequel. Maybe you like to play fast and lose with your blue sphere. You like to roll a little more on the chaotic side of the alignment chart. Well, lucky for you, good old Knuckles Chaotix actually gave us a proper sequel to Blue Sphere with its special stages. Just like in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, in this game's special stages, you have to collect Blue Spheres. However, it also takes some cues from Sonic 2 special stages as you're moving along this hexagonal halfpipe. Personally, I'm more of a fan of the classic Blue Sphere, but this is a cool sequel. But hey, if that wasn't enough for you, then Blue Spheres are also in Sonic Mania special stages. You're chasing after this UFO, and by collecting Blue Spheres, you can increase your speed. There's also Blue Spheres in Sonic Hero special stages. The ones you have to collect aren't exclusively blue, but hey, it counts. There are a couple of other games with Blue Spheres in their special stages, like the 3DS version of Sonic Lost World where you're flying around space collecting Blue Spheres, but this game completely ruins everything because it calls them orbs instead of spheres. Terrible. Speaking of other names for the titular Blue Spheres, in the Sonic 3 Japanese manual, the spheres are called balls. So you have to collect blue balls. Do with that information what you will. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, there's a whole playlist of videos just like this one on the left side of the screen. If you want to be notified when I post a new video, then click on the subscribe button and the notification bell. If you'd be so kind, click the like button too before you go, as it really helps the channel grow. Thanks guys, don't try too hard to be perfect, and have a good one.